So, um, yeah, uh, also uh, hello from my side. My name is Konrad Puga. I'm a PhD student at uh, Hamburg University of Technology. And I will be talking about the evaluation of avionic routing protocols using a multi-scale simulation in Omnet++. And the emphasis is on the multi-scale simulation part of this title. So um, for the outline, first of all, I will talk about the simulation scenario for the avionic routing um, to basically um, give a motivation why we're actually doing all these things. Then I will make a very, very short introduction of the routing protocol we were proposing and what are the reasons why we do need a new routing protocol for this scenario. And then I will go into the main part, which is the architecture of our multi-scale simulation approach. And then um, we'll close this, uh, this talk with showing some performance results on how this multi-scale simulation um, performs and also give some closing remarks when to use a multi-scale simulation and when it's probably not a good idea. So um, in avionic routing, there is one prime example where you want to have a mesh network between aircraft. And this is the so-called North Atlantic Corridor, which is the oceanic airspace between Europe and North America. And what you can see on um, this screen grab, um, this, is, um, yeah, this is a map showing exactly this airspace with a bunch of aircraft crossing from North America to Europe, and um, as this is the busiest airspace which goes over the ocean, so over an infrastructure-less region, this is the prime example where you want to evaluate routing for avionic mesh networks. To give some more detail about this scenario, um, we have uh, this scenario is quite specific in uh, different ways. The first one is um, because of time differences between Europe and North America, aircraft form swarms flying over the over the ocean. That means um, in the beginning you would see a swarm going from America to Europe and only if that one um, arrives in Europe you see aircraft going into the other direction. Also because of air traffic regulation they do not fly on the same space. So what you can see in this upper picture is their uh, so-called uh, North Atlantic track system and um, aircraft from North America to Europe take the red tracks and uh, the other way around would take the blue tracks. So uh, we have those swarms of aircraft which are separated uh, in time and in space and um, they, they fly together in this formation. Also as aircraft are flying quite high, um, they have a big communication range. Uh, for this evaluation we use 400 kilometers but actually even more is possible. Also, if we look into the lower graph, this is a time series showing how many aircraft are actually in this region uh, over time. And here we see the separation in time. So uh, only if the, the eastbound swarm uh, is arriving, we see the westbound swarm coming. And um, we can also see from this plot that this, a swarm takes about five to six hours to fly all the way from one coast to the other. And this very specific mobility scenario gives us um, some problems, but also some chances to make, uh, to, to make an efficient routing protocol. Because we've seen we have very long communication distances, which means also very long propagation delay. Also, the traffic applications are quite time sensitive and our radio resources are limited. So what we want is a routing protocol, which actually has a very low overhead, and it can achieve this by selecting routes, which last for a very long time. And this is enabled by the swarm formation, because although aircraft are moving quite fast, they have very little relative movement as they all stay in this formation for those entire five to six hours. The routing protocol, which I will just very shortly go over, um, is called AODV-LD, which is link duration based uh, AODV. Um, AODV is a quite common um, ad hoc routing protocol, and it was selected for its reactive nature. And also, of course, um, because there is a, a good INET reference implementation. And um, basically, the deductions we do is um, instead well, AODV would um, be in reactive, would use a route request, route reply model to find a route. And 
Basically, that would mean that the source node would broadcast the route request, and only if that arrives at the destination node, that one would answer with a route reply. And since these route requests are propagating to the network, it might arrive multiple times at the destination, and AODV would only answer the first one and then ignore everything after that. And this is the change we are doing to AODV um, with this uh, LD add-on which says we are not taking the first route request we get, but we wait a bit until we get route requests over multiple routes and then answer the best one. The best in our terms is the one which we expect to last the longest. And we have different ways of calculating this, but that is a bit out of scope for this presentation. And for the evaluation of these routing protocols, we are actually most interested in three things. The first one is does it do the routes we find with AODV LD are actually lasting longer than routes we would find with AODV? So does this whole idea even make it make sense? And also we are very interested in uh, delays. As I said, the communication we are doing over this North Atlantic corridor is often quite time sensitive. So we are interested in the end-to-end -end delay for regular packets and also the route acquisition delay because this entire process of setting up a route will take a while and will take longer with AODV LD as we are not answering the first route request, but waiting a bit. To make this a bit more visual, I prepared a, a video showing um, how this whole um, yeah, route request uh, procedure would look like for AODV LD. And um, you see here a bunch of aircrafts. We have a red one, aircraft number one, which wants to find a route to the internet gateway. And um, it would look like this. So first we see the route request broadcasted. Um, now we see it arriving for a second time here and being dropped as the route the lifetime is bad. Now it arrives the first time in the internet gateway and it's not replied by the timer is started. It arrived the second time, but now from a better route. And now and when the timer expired, it will take the better route and answer this one to aircraft number one. And when the route reply arrives at aircraft number one, then the route is set up and now aircraft number one could send its data to the internet gateway. So um, this uh, is everything about the scenario as well as the proposed routing protocol. Let's go into the multi-scale simulation and why this is even a thing. So. Um, to get some meaningful um, measurements out of the simulation, we also need lower layers. And for this, we um, decided to use LTE-like, so based on simul LTE link and file layer technology, because um, other actually already deployed avionic communication systems used a system like that. Now the challenge is that, as I said, to simulate the whole mobility and get information of how the routing protocol performs, we have to simulate five to six hours to have the entire aircraft swarm flying. But SimulATE, for everyone who has worked with it, is very com computationally intensive because LTE, um, yeah, it, it, it plays on the scale of milliseconds. And um, the solution to overcome this challenge is basically to split the simulation effort in two. So we do a macro simulation, which basically uses a very, very abstract um, network interface card and um, only a unit is a radio medium. And this one is run for a very, very long time to capture all the effects the routing has, although it has uh, only a, a limited view of how the, the network interface card performs. And from this long running simulation, we will capture some snapshots and store them so we can uh, basically replay them in something we call a micro simulation. And this one then has the full fledged simulation model with the proper network interface card and can give us um, information about the timings. And um, here is a schematic showing how this um, multi scale simulation would perform. So, first thing we do is we feed all the information we have. Um, into the macro simulation. And this one will then run for a time and will detect um, points where we want to have a snapshot. For our scenario, this is whenever a, a route breaks, because when a route breaks, we will first have a route establishment procedure. So we get the acquisition delay. 
And after the route is established, we get proper end-to-end -end delays when the route um, yeah, uh, persists. So these are for us the times where we um, do the snapshot. And we will just have it run and collect all those times. But actually, what we want to do, uh, well, and from those times, we can then start the micro simulation and they run for a very short time because they are not intended to capture the routing behavior, but just take the topology of the snapshot and then evaluate the timings we uh, get for the route acquisition. But there are two nuances to it. The first one is we actually do not want to start our simulation in the time instance where the route breaks, but a bit before. And to circumvent this, we basically, we actually run the macro simulation two times. First one, we go through it and only collect the timestamps when we expect those um, route breaks. And then we run it a second time and collect snapshots actually before those time instance happen. So this is what we see here. Here we always have our route errors, so when the route breaks, but the snapshots are created actually a time before that so that we can warm up our micro simulation and get basically the full procedure in there. Here is um, the th same thing from a more architectural view, so um, which, which shows how we facilitate this, uh, the, the whole process of, uh, of capturing a snapshot. And for this, we have implemented two uh, components and Omnet. The first one is a snapshot manager. This is a top level module and there's only one simulation. And this one is actually used to orchestrate the whole snapshot creation process. Because um, what we would happen, what would have is that every host, so every aircraft node simulation would be equipped with another special module, which would be the snapshot module. And this one is in charge of, first of all, detecting when we want to uh, create a snapshot then it will uh, send this information to the snapshot manager and tell them, please tell all the other modules in our uh, simulation to create a snapshot of themselves. And then the snapshot manager will distribute this information to all the registered snapshot modules and they will create a snapshot of the, of the host they are in. Um, we decided for that architecture because the snapshot module is in charge of basically um, on the one hand, creating the snapshot and also restoring itself from a snapshot. So basically what is implemented in here is a serialization and deserialization method where I can um, basically capture the state of a host inside a file. And then when I restart the simulation as a micro simulation, I can read the state and basically have, have the state copied from, from the micro simulation. In our case, um, the contents of a snapshot are, um, for one, the, the IP address, because uh, routing would have weird results if the IP addresses change in between. And uh, also, we have some, um, um, for our uh, routing protocol, we actually collect link lifetimes and uh, of all encountered nodes. And obviously, all those, those have to be uh, persisted and restored when we start the micro simulation. And also, we have the entire routing table plus all the AODV and AODV LD specific route data. And as this is a snapshot, we will just um, we will collect this during the micro simulation, write it to a file, and then we can restart the micro simulation from it. And another benefit of this multi scale simulation is that uh, the micro simulation is, an, is, is a fully deterministic simulation because we will feed in the mobility as trace files and we use unit this radio model which also has no randomness in it which means we have this long running simulation and also have to only have to run it well twice for the for the uh, for, to get the, the timestamps and also the the snapshots but we don't have to run it multiple times to compute uh, confidence intervals which we have to do with the micro simulations, but as they run very, very shortly, it's not a problem for us. As I promised, I will give some performance and um, I, would, I, I just collected some information of the runs we did. And uh, we, you can basically see very well the speed difference between the micro and the macro simulation. So for the micro simulation, we are creating around 31,000 events per sim seconds. For the micro simulation, it's about 25 times as many. And one run of the micro simulation, which is the six hour of swarm time, takes around eight hours in real time. 
and micro simulation, which is only 20 seconds in, 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 in real time, will take five minutes to simulate. And we can also see uh, the, the performance of, of, of them in comparison, note the logarithmic scale, and we see that the macro simulation runs about two orders of magnitude faster than the micro simulation, which emphasizes the point that um, the six hours of actual swarm movement are not feasible to be simulated in a fully full blown micro simulation with the actual network interface part in it. Some closing remarks. So um, we've presented this uh, to show that this um, scheme, um, the scheme of a multi-scale simulation enables a full system uh, investigation, one over very long times as our mobility dictates to do, but also in high detail because um, we can still measure our, um, our link layer delays, which, uh, which are caused. Um, but it uh, has some shortcomings. And the first one is we have to be sure that the snapshots we create are actually representative of what the state should be with the, which, which, with, with the full model, which is okay for us because um, we want the routing state, which is um, mostly determined by, by the topology. So it is okay, but if, um, if it would not be feasible to swap the network interface card for a simpler model, there would no way, be no way to make multi-scale simulation of it. Also, I've shown you what our um, snapshot files include, and this is a decision one would need to do for every multi-scale simulation, because we decided to not put in any, um, well, queue information or every package which are currently in flight, because our traffic model does not send so often. So we can approximate our current state or like packet state um, with being empty and then just being resent. But this might not be true if we have some uh, full buffer model, then this would obviously be in the snapshot as well and needed to be recreated for the micro simulation. With that, thank you for your attention. <laughs>